Hi everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. I'm continuing my journey in Bali and uh, this weekend I had the opportunity to stay at the most beautiful hotel called Tugu. Uh, it's located in the southwest of uh, Bali and it's a beachfront resort that overlooks the Indian Ocean. It is just remarkable. I'm looking out of my window right now and I can see the ocean waves crashing and I can see you know, the sun sparkling on the water. It's so soothing and, and, and serene. It's beautiful. Um, Tugu is really a luxury hotel in every sense of the word. Um, it um, has an amazing location, of course. The staff are beautiful. They're so kind and, um, and generous and um, you know, want you to be happy. And it's really a lovely atmosphere. Um, the rooms, uh, the bungalows are beautiful. They're all a little bit different. Um, dark wood, lots of windows, and uh, some of them have uh, pools in the bathroom where you can you know, feel like you're outside in nature while you're having a shower. And um, there's a there, she has a beautiful massage um, facility too, where you can sit, you can actually have the massage outside with the ocean breeze uh, blowing on your on your body. Um, there are some other lovely features. Um, for example, the the grounds, tropical flowers everywhere, just beautiful, and winding paths that just seem to take you into you know magic worlds. Lots of doors, which I love, and um, and just interesting um, artistic features. The hotel itself really is um, focused on art, culture and architecture. When you come into the um, reception area you see a huge um, uh, Garuda, it's wooden Garuda, maybe 20 feet high and it welcomes you in. And the Garuda is the, um, the national icon of Indonesia so it has very strong cultural and, um, and spiritual significance and as you come in it's there to you know welcome. The, 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 root, the area, the lobby is uh, dark wood with uh, purple and red uh, fur furniture, uh, very subdued lighting and just so atmospheric, it's, it's gorgeous. And then you come outside into the beautiful sunlight and there's um, a swimming pool, places to sit and relax and have a drink and, uh, and then the tropical gardens which I love. I love lotus flowers too and there's a beautiful lotus um, pond. Uh, in the morning when the sun is out uh, the pinks and blue and um, whites come out and it's just really really gorgeous and there's a little fountain that gives even more atmosphere to the to the lotus pool. Just gorgeous. And so in addition to all these things um, there you know it's just that the experience is total which made me think about what luxury really is. I mean, of course, it's all the things I've mentioned in terms of quality and refinement and, and, and just choice and um, serenity. But it's also, to me, something else. I think that luxury is being redefined and it's more to do with the experience, with the with the overall feeling that you have when you're in these places. This is actually an eco hotel as well, in the sense it tries to, um, you know, preserve, um, be built around sustainable um, uh, principles, and be conscious of the the traveler who wants more than just uh, things. Who wants an experience that's deeper. And um, so I think that that's that's a really important feature uh, to mention. And and for me, it got down to nourishment. It was how travel nourishes you and how a place like this um, you know, can, can contribute to that. So first of all, uh, how, do, how does travel nourish me? Um, first of all, I think it's with, the, with, the, with nature. It's beautiful here and you cannot escape the fact that it, it's there to surround you with its beauty and to energize you and, and kind of bring together mind, body and, and spirit. It's a total um, you know, experience. The second thing that, that nourishes me when I travel, and, and here particularly, has been culture and art and history. You know, it's not always something that a lot of hotels incorporate into the experience, but here uh, in, the, in the lobby and all throughout the, the property, you'll see art, artifacts and uh, art, beautiful paintings of um, uh, dancers and, and uh, there's music, and they have cultural e evening here where you can learn about Bali from that perspective. And so I think that culture and art really do nourish you at a deeper level as well. So that, that was important for me. And uh, the next thing is uh, cooking and, and, the, and nourishment through, through food. Um, I took the opportunity to do a cooking class here and all the women were fantastic. And we were outside in an open kitchen and uh, learning all about how to make um, satay, shredded chicken, and all oh, this cake uh, made out of purple potatoes. 
and it was a purple cake. It, this, I mean, this, the color alone was just spectacular, but um, it was a cake that you could make with sweet potato or even beetroot. It's really cool. And so we made this uh, this dinner and of course our lunch of course i got to eat it which was wonderful and oh yeah also i learned uh, how to make jamu now jamu is a drink very specific to bali as i think as every mother and grandmother has their own uh, special jamu recipe but um this one uh, yesterday we learned uh, four different recipes one for slimming, one for uh, flu influenza and flu, one was for um, women's hormones, and the other was for, um, oh yes, just general strength. And they all had different ingredients, uh, some turmeric, ginger, tamarind, um, ginkgo, uh, palm sugar, lots of different cool ingredients. I got to taste them all, it was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, so Jammu and cooking nourished me obviously the food was wonderful but also just the way it was prepared and learning about the ingredients and the plants that were involved it's just remarkable how almost every plant on this island has some purpose something that it's good for and good for you so that was really important so I think the in addition to culture and uh, nature and and food the, the next thing that I was nourished by were the people I mean, Balinese people, and I'm not exaggerating, are so friendly and so generous and sweet. Uh, there's a, there's a, oh, I don't know, just an undercurrent of kindness that I, I personally value so much. But also, I've met travelers. And if I'm traveling solo, as you know, I'm by myself, but I met so many people. So you should never worry about traveling by, your, you know, traveling by yourself. You're always going to meet wonderful people and seren wonderful serendipity. So I would encourage you to give it a go. There's lots of um, older women here too. And I've had so many great conversations about 60 and Me and about what we're doing. And people really do love it. So I'm very supportive of that. So I'd like to ask you, how are you nourished by travel? How does it nourish you? Tell us about an experience you've had of being nourished by travel. And uh, let's start a conversation. So thank you again for being here with me on this journey. It's wonderful to know you're all there um, sharing you know, the experiences. And I'd love your feedback and your comments on how you're nourished yourself by travel, whether it's to the next city or town or around the world. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. Take care. Thank you.